Hello and welcome to another edition of the Peninsula Biz Buzz. We're excited to be here again today. We are doing all things uh, Hampton Roads with our guests and we've got another good one today. My name is Shelly Smith. I'm here representing proudly the Peninsula uh, Sherm as well as my own business career for. Over to you, Bob. Hey, good afternoon. How are you today, William? I'm doing great. So, so we're here today for the 10th episode of Peninsula Biz Buzz with uh, my friend, President and CEO of Hampton Roads Transit, William Harrell. Um, so the way we'd like to start, William, is if you could just talk a little bit about your mission at Hampton Roads Transit and, uh, and maybe uh, talk about your board makeup also and, uh, and then uh, give us a little bit of background about how you came to be President and CEO of Hampton Roads Transit. So what in your career brought you to this moment in time that's so critical to the 757 to have a leader like you in your seat. So go ahead, over to you. Well, thank you, Bob, and thank you, Shelly. I'm certainly excited to, to be here uh, at Hampton Roads Transit. Uh, our mission is to connect Hampton Roads with trans transportation solutions that are reliable, safe, efficient, and sustainable. Um, Transportation is so important in terms of the livelihood of any community. And the fact that we serve both the south side and the north side really speaks to the connectivity uh, that's part of our wonderful Hampton Roads region, the 757. And uh, we really look forward to improving the quality of public transportation uh, in this region. I'm excited that this 10th episode will be your best episode. <laughs> um, I don't want to uh, put too much pressure on myself. But we <laughs> saved the best for 10th. That's what we said. That was our motto at the beginning. That was. That is what we said. <laughs> at, least, at least until your 11th uh, program comes forward. Uh, I have been in public service for 34 years. I know I don't look that old, but uh, I've had the opportunity to work in public administration. Uh, since uh, the mid 80s, I started in Suffolk, Virginia as an administrative uh, analyst uh, in the city manager's office, uh, worked my way up to assistant city manager and at that point left, went to North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina for three years. And from there to Richmond where I was the chief administrative officer. And finally back to Hampton Roads, I can't get away from my home here. I'm glad to be back. Uh, previously a city manager of Chesapeake, and I had the opportunity to take over Hampton Roads Transit uh, in 2012. So uh, I'm excited to be at the helm of a very important uh, agency that really helps to address employment and workforce issues for this region. Okay, so, so as president and CEO, you are kind of in the same position that I am in at the chamber. You're the executive, you're the guy who on a daily basis is paid to make sure all the buses run on time, for instance, right? Uh, yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. Uh, but um, you have a board also, like I do, that you report to. How is your, how is your board made up? And, and the reason I'm asking is what localities uh, make up Hampton Roads Transit and is the board made up of elected officials from those localities, uh, private citizens? How, how is your board made up, your bosses, so to speak? Sure, and they certainly are uh, my bosses, and, and like you, I'm the day-to-day -day executive. Um, however, uh, we have a board of 13 uh, that is made up of um, mayors and city council members from the six cities that are part of Hampton Roads Transit, which include Hampton, Newport News, and the south side cities of uh, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Portsmouth, and Norfolk. Uh, so I have one city council member from each member of city. Uh, also, back in 2013, there used to be two city council members per city, but uh, in some legislative changes that occurred in 2013, uh, the governor appoints one business person from each of those member cities, and uh, the director, the state director of rail and public uh, transportation, uh, who is now Jennifer Mitchell, also serves on the board. So we have 13 members and we meet monthly. And we have several working committees, including 
including audit, budget operations, and oversight to deal with the day-to-day -day as well as the major strategic planning issues of transportation planning in Hampton Roads. Shelly, over to you. So one of the things that I know that was very exciting is the electric buses. Um, and you've got some different, you know, uh, other initiatives that are going on. You, you definitely are always looking for the career-minded individuals as well to come into your fold, as well as obviously serving those who are looking for the transportation. So let the viewers know and the listeners know kind of what, what um, I guess, charge some of those initiatives and what those focal points are specifically for 2020. You've got some of them laid out on the website, but just some of your specific really hot topics that you're focused on and why. Sure. Uh, I would say the, the primary issue that we're extremely concerned about is building uh, a core bus network that better serves the region. Uh, one of the key challenges, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to share this because a lot of people don't recognize that each of the six cities has an independent service plan. While the cities connect, uh, there are different levels of service. So as you're trying to navigate the region, particularly coming from the peninsula to the south side or the south side to the north side, uh, in many cases, there can be long commute times because some cities have more intense transit services, others, uh, have less transit services. So what we have proposed and we're working very hard and we're hoping that uh, we'll get some traction uh, at the General Assembly level is there needs to be a core regional bus system that really transcends geographical boundaries. And what we mean by that is rather than have different service days and, and service times, we need a system region-wide that whether you're in Newport News or Virginia Beach, you should be able to count on a bus during peak hours every 15 minutes. Right now we have most of our buses are every hour. Um, we have a few routes that are 15 minutes, uh, primarily in the city of Norfolk, but there's very few um, short frequency routes. So we are working very hard on getting the funding for a core bus network and working with the state and a new strategic plan, we're hoping to build some regional support and funding for that. Much like we have, and I know one of your prior programs uh, dealt with HR attack, they are roughly $5 billion in transportation road projects, road bridges and tunnels uh, throughout the region, but we don't have not one dollar of dedicated funding for transit. So that's what we're working to get a level of resources to really fund the type of transit service that can help elevate Hampton Roads to be able to compete with other regions uh, around the country. The other thing, and you mentioned the electric buses, we recognize the fact that we've got to leverage technology to attract new riders. So we are excited. Uh, that we want to get mobile fare payment. We're doing a pilot project on that right now and uh, working very closely with the state. We've gotten some funding for electric buses. We want to pilot them initially uh, between Norfolk and Virginia Beach, uh, along Virginia Beach Boulevard because of the frequency. There is 15 minute service there so that we can test out that technology. And our hope is to eventually be in a position to get additional electric buses that we can deploy throughout the region to include the peninsula. What, what are some of the things that you recommend businesses um, do to help you um, raising of the funds, raising of the issues for more bus stops period and or obviously more buses in order to do that? What, what, what should we be doing specifically as business owners on the peninsula to help this? Well, that's, that's a great question. And I think probably the most critical question that's important for the region, uh, working very closely uh, with the Chamber of Commerce on both sides of the border, we are really trying to educate the business community. Uh, when we're in general assembly sessions and we talk to legislators, 
uh, when we ask for additional support, the first thing they ask is, well, uh, William, uh, how does the business community uh, feel about it? Do the businesses support it? I think one of the things we've learned over the last several years as new businesses look to locate in Hampton Roads, they really have two fundamental questions. Number one is what is the, uh, what is your workforce like? Is your workforce able to provide the level of service and labor that we need? But secondly, and this is where we come in, is can the workforce get to the job site? Uh, when HQ2 was going on and everybody uh, was competing to, to try to get that second headquarters, uh, there are big questions in addition to airport and other community amenities is what type of transit system that you have. So I think as Hampton Rules looks to become more competitive for jobs and keeping our millennials here, we've got to have more public transportation. Uh, we've got a lot of baby boomers that are really kind of aging out of driving and don't always want to drive. We've got to have a system that people can rely on so that we're not just serving the transit dependent, which are wonderful customers. We also want to attract what we call choice riders. That's you and I that have the choice to use transit if it's viable, if it has reasonable commute time. So that's what we're focused on. And we're excited that the chamber is really looking to discuss this issue more with business. Bob? Okay, so, so William, you, you've been in the same conversations that I'm in uh, frequently with the Wolfpack and others, but um, we keep hearing that we're in a war for talent, right? Talent, talent, talent. And, and you already touched on this just a second ago when you said, um, one of the ways that we have to be able to attract millennials is providing good public transportation. So, so when I say to people, okay, what's missing? How, how come the millennials don't want to stay here? How come we can't attract them? Well, the first thing that they always say is public transportation. And, and my answer to them is always, we're not New York City and we're not Washington, D.C. This is a huge challenge. And you touched on probably the two major obstacles that you're facing in getting this done. Um, six localities, right, separated by water uh, in, in many cases, and a lot of people live in one place, work in another place, and then funding. So um, the Transit Transformation Project has been ongoing, right, the results just were reported out. Can you talk a little bit about how that project is addressing those obstacles in order to attract millennials, really? Yes. Uh and uh, I thank you for your participation uh, in the regional uh, advisory committee. We had uh, business leaders from throughout the region uh, that were co-chaired by uh, Mayor Donnie Tuck of Hampton and uh, Mayor John Rowe of course. We felt that it was important to show the support of public transit on both sides of the water. And I can certainly say uh, for the first time, uh, in a long time, and I'm not sure that we've ever seen this level of cooperation. Just um, last week, uh, I had the opportunity to speak with the uh, Hampton Roads Legislative Delegation, the caucus, and uh, Mayor Alexander was there. We had uh, Linda Johnson of the City of Suffolk, who's not currently a Hampton Roads Transit member, but knows how important the connectivity is with public transportation and overall transportation. Uh, we had to Rick West, uh, mayor of Chesapeake. Uh, and of course, I think I mentioned John Rowe uh, as well. So, you know, that was um, a, a great opportunity to show that for the first time. And I think this transformation transit project uh, really is, is uh, addressing an issue that is needed, uh, that has been needed for some time, which is, we need an overall regional vision for public transportation. Newport <coughs> News and Portsmouth and Norfolk, uh, as well as Hampton and Virginia Beach. And uh, I think we're making significant progress. And, um, you know, we've been talking to legislators on both the House and the Senate side. And I think we're starting to begin to get some traction on what can the state do to help provide those core resources that can help have, have a system that is truly connected and seamless 
between the various communities. Right, because because the bottom line is, show me the money, right? I mean, you've you've got this transit transformation project, which put together a nice framework, uh, a nice plan that is hopefully executable and and will make things more efficient and sustainable. But now we need funding, right? And that's so that's the next step. Absolutely. And it's always the most difficult one. Yes, because you know, right now, based on our one hundred million dollar operating budget, cities are really uh, paying for forty five percent of that. And we've done best management practice research. And the bottom line is communities tend to support more of the capital side and less of the day-to-day -day operations side because of the fact that most transit properties, particularly a multimodal agency, where we have light rail, we have paratransit, uh, we have bus and ferry, um, most transit properties that have a multimodal landscape clearly have some level of dedicated funding, where it's a portion of gas tax or sales tax or whatever it may be to help support the overall operations of public transit. That is missing in Hampton Roads. Because of that, we have a very fragmented system. And until we're able to make a successful business case as to why that's important, I think the system will always be less than what it could be. So I think we're making major progress with the um, elected officials taking this on. We have great partnerships with uh, Newport News Shipbuilding and some of the educational uh, institutions. The bottom line is we have, have to bring everyone together because public transportation is part of one of those needs that really makes a community go. And that's what we're trying to do. And Bob, we appreciate your help with this effort. Well, I'd like to be able to do more. So, so talk to me about, uh, talk to us about uh, marketing. So we talked to Bob Crum earlier today and, uh, and we decided that everything is about marketing, right? Raising the level of awareness of the public and the business owners so that they'll have some skin in the game, uh, the military and others. Talk about your outreach from HRT to the general public because if we can raise the level of awareness, you have more riders, more supporters, more funding. Is that, I mean, that's it in a, in a small nutshell, but. You're absolutely right, Bob. And, you know, one of the historic challenges, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to address it, is, you know, HRT over the years has had some challenges, financial uh, included. Uh, during the light rail construction, long before I was part of this organization, they had this significant overrun due, due to changes in the scope. So a lot of times there's, you know, concerns. Can HRT move forward with a major construction project? Uh, then uh, in fiscal year 16, we had a budget overage and we were able to work with the cities to address that. But uh, I've changed my CFO. I've made all sorts of organizational adjustments. And I'm pleased to say since that fiscal year 16 challenge, we have had a surplus every single year, 17, 18, and even in this closing the books on fiscal year 19, we are returning funds back to the cities. So one of the things that was important for me to establish as a leader of this organization is that number one, HRT is a good investment in the future. But Bob Crum is absolutely right. We have had such a major success on the road construction side of the house. Between um, the TPO, the Transportation Planning Organization, HR TAC, the Accountability Commission, uh, as well as VDOT constructing the projects, we have over $5 billion of construction work happening in this region. And that is so exciting. Uh, we're excited about that at Hampton Roads Transit because our buses and paratransit vehicles use the same roadways that the single occupancy vehicles use. So we're excited about that, but we want to build on the success of that, that three-legged stool. So our hope in pursuing additional resources is let us work through HR TAC uh, as our fiscal agent so that any additional state dollars 
that can improve public transit will flow through HR TAC and then could be provided to Hampton Roads Transit in our service area in the Williamsburg area that can flow through the Williamsburg area transit. Uh, in Suffolk, they have a, uh, a, a system as well. So one of the good aspects of the strategic plan is it looks at the entire region as a whole. So while we're trying to implement the transformational transit component in our six member cities, including Hampton and Newport News, we also are working with Suffolk as well as Williamsburg, because it doesn't matter whether you're a tourist in Williamsburg or in Virginia Beach, you wanna have a seamless experience, you wanna be able to hop on transit and get to a major destination. So it is a truly regional vision and we've gotta work hard to get uh, the community more engaged in this. Absolutely, Shelly, over to you. You know, I don't, I don't have any additional pieces other than uh, William to ask you, is there something that you were hoping that we would ask you about that you could uh, tell the listeners and viewers and or just a, a question or a point of clarity just as we go into wrap up mode? Uh, I would say that, you know, we're working hard to, to build trust. We're working hard to develop a regional system that we can all be proud of. And uh, I, I really relish the opportunity uh, to speak to your viewers about this. One of the things that I say all the time is that you may never use Hampton Roads Transit, but chances are you rely on someone who does. 60% mm -hmm. of those that ride public transportation are going to work, medical appointments. We are not a social service. We deliver a very valuable service to this region. Uh, we have a, a daily ridership of 43,000 uh, trips, uh, which is a lot of people use public transit to get to where they need to go. But when you look at the overall stats, that's between one and 2% of our region. Why isn't there more? Marketing, as Bob mentioned, is one, but the frequency of routes and being able to rely on the system is another. So we've got to get that regional funding to help create that regional system and i think you'll see ridership grow significantly so thank you for the opportunity to address this important issue for our region now that was a, a beautiful point that you made a very beautiful point so much so that i got to repeat it just because you're not riding doesn't mean that the person that you need at work today isn't riding and coming so i, I think that's a so so clear um, the, the point is it hits all of us, it affects all of us, so we need to be aware and do what, do what we can. So we thank you for your time today. Um, the, the main website, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you're interested in becoming um, an employee of and to hearing more about the opportunities to work for the transit, you can find that on the website. You can also find their other, um, other different stops and other availability is straight on the website. It is pretty user friendly website and must uh and must come in as well which you do not do not often find so that's one thing we've got going for us for that so my name is shelly smith appreciate you being here today um again once you see this like share post comment tell bob who it is you want to have on here as a guest bob is committed to keeping uh, the peninsula chamber alive and relevant and bringing to you the very topics that you want to hear about. So signing off on, on behalf of myself, back over to you, Bob. Uh, I thought William wrapped it up well, and then Shelly, you wrapped up the show well. So I've got nothing left to say except thanks, William. I enjoyed talking to you as always, and I learned something as always also. And uh, Shelly, I am very happy for this partnership. So let's keep it going. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a